In this video, I'm going to use this trigonometric identity to rederive Viet's formula for ourselves. So, the sine of theta is equal to twice the cosine of theta over 2 multiplied by the sine of theta over 2. So if we now replace theta with theta over 2, then we would have that the sine of theta over 2 is equal to twice the cosine of theta over 4 times the sine of theta over 4. And if we replace theta with theta over 4, then we would have the sine of theta over 4 is equal to twice the cosine of theta over 8 times the sine of theta over 8. So if we look back at the original equation here, you can notice that we have the sine of theta over 2, but we just solved for what the sine of theta over 2 is. It's this expression here, so we can substitute that in. So we have the sine of theta is equal to twice the cosine of theta over 2 multiplied by this expression here, so twice the cosine of theta over 4 times the sine of theta over 4. And notice in this equation that we have the sine of theta over 4, which we solved for earlier. It's equal to this expression here, which we can substitute in. So again, we have the sine of theta is equal to twice the cosine of theta over 2 multiplied by twice the cosine of theta over 4. And all of this is multiplied by this expression here, which is twice the cosine of theta over 8 times the sine of theta over 8. And if we go back to the original expression and we refer to this as n equals 1, and this as n equals 2, and this one as n equals 3, then we can generalize and say that the sine of theta is equal to 2 to the n, because notice when n equals 1, there is 1, 2. When n equals 2, we have 2, 2's. And when n equals 3, there are 3, 2's. So on the nth expression of the sine of theta, we would have n, 2's. And this is multiplied by the cosine of theta over 2, times the cosine of theta over 4, multiplied all the way up to the cosine of theta over 2 to the n. Since in n equals 1, we have 2 to the first power. In n equals 2, 4 is just 2 squared. And in n equals 3, we have 8, which is 2 cubed. So on the nth expression, we would have cosine of theta over 2 to the n. And this is multiplied by sine of theta over 2 to the n. And now I would like to divide everything by theta. So if I divide by theta, then I'd have the sine of theta divided by theta is equal to 2 to the n divided by theta multiplied by each of these terms. And this term here, the 2 to the n over theta, can be written in a slightly different way. So this is equal to 1 divided by theta over 2 to the n. So now I can write this sine of theta over theta as the sine of theta over theta is equal to cosine of theta over 2 times the cosine of theta over 4 multiplied all the way up to the cosine of theta over 2 to the n multiplied by the sine of theta over 2 to the n, and this is divided by theta over 2 to the n. So I can let n approach infinity, and when I do this, I really only have to look at this one term here. So if I make some space, then I can take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sine theta over 2 to the n divided by theta over 2 to the n. So notice that as n gets bigger and bigger that the numerator approaches the sine of 0 and the denominator approaches 0. 
So this limit here is equivalent to the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x divided by x. And it's a well-known fact from basic calculus that this limit is equal to 1. So we can go back to our original equation here. And since this term is equal to 1, we can essentially ignore it. So I can conclude now that the sine of theta divided by theta is equal to the cosine of theta over 2 times the cosine of theta over 4 multiplied by the cosine of theta over 8 and this goes on forever. So to get Viet's formula we just need to evaluate this when theta is equal to pi over 2. And remember that the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So our equation becomes 1 divided by pi over 2 is equal to the cosine of pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 8 multiplied by the cosine of pi over 16 and this goes on forever. And to evaluate all of these cosines we need to use the second trig identity that I derived in the first video that the cosine of theta over 2 is equal to the square root of the cosine of theta plus 1 divided by 2. And the cosine of pi over 4 it's known as the square root of 2 over 2. So I can use this to find the cosine of pi over 8 which is equal to the square root of the cosine of pi over 4 which is the square root of 2 over 2. So I have the square root of 2 over 2 plus 1 divided by 2. And I can simplify this to the square root of the square root of 2 plus 2 divided by 4 which again simplifies to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 all divided by 2. And I can again use this formula to find the cosine of pi over 16 so the cosine of pi over 16 is equal to the square root of the cosine of pi over 8, which is this result. So I have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 divided by 2 plus 1. And all of this is divided by 2. And this simplifies to the square root of the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus 2 on the outside, all divided by 4. And this at last simplifies to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus root 2, all divided by 2. So I can rewrite this equation in yellow here as 2 divided by pi is equal to the cosine of pi over 4 which remember is the square root of 2 over 2 multiplied by the cosine of pi over 8 which is this expression here. So I have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 inside all divided by 2. And this is multiplied by this expression here the cosine of pi over 16 which is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 all divided by 2 and you can continue this general idea. So the next term would be the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus root 2, all divided by 2. And this continues. This formula that Viet found continues on forever.